Hey everybody, 16 ounce setups here. I've been using my work from home setup for a while now, and I think I'm finally ready to upgrade my monitor stands. So today, we're gonna be talking all about monitor arms. Monitor arms are a really great way to open up your setup and get some of that real estate on your desk that I'm always talking about. I think it's a great way to kind of get a more clean, more minimal look on your desk. Um, as I've always said before, you don't necessarily need to fill up every square inch of your space. And I really think that's a key aspect to getting a minimal desk setup. One thing I should note is that you don't necessarily need to upgrade to a monitor arm. Some stock mounts out there are actually really nice. For instance, if you look at my Samsung Space Monitor, it comes with a pretty nice mounting assembly that can be clamped to any desk, and it can be pushed back against the wall to give kind of a flush look. It has decent cable management with cables that run through channels in the back, and everything is pretty clean and minimal already. So this is something that I do not really plan on upgrading anytime in the future. For a contrasting example, you can look at my work from home setup and see that I'm losing a lot of space in the corner here. Um, I can definitely gain a few square feet even if I upgrade both of these monitors to have a dual monitor arm. So now that we know that we want a monitor arm, there's a few things you have to consider and one of those is VESA compatibility. VESA is an organization that was created to drive uniformity in the electronics industry and one of the set of standards they created was bolting patterns in TVs, monitors, and mounts. So most of the third-party mounts out there you'll be buying will be VESA compatible, but you need to ensure that your monitor is VESA compatible as well. Unfortunately, one of the examples I used earlier, my Samsung Space Monitor, is not VESA compatible. So if I were to buy a mount for this thing, I would also need to buy an adapter. Um, fortunately, there's a large group of enthusiasts that will 3D print these for you on places like Etsy. Uh, you can perhaps even download a file yourself and 3D print if you have a printer at home. But this is just something extra you need to consider if your monitor is not VESA compatible. Okay, so now it's time to start looking at monitor arm types. And in the grand scheme of things, I think there are two main monitor arms you should be considering, and these are pull mounts and spring mounts. As a general rule of thumb, if you're gonna be moving your monitor around a lot, I would typically suggest a spring mount. Pull mounts look absolutely fantastic if your monitor is going to be stationary. You can see that I actually had this in one of my setups for a very, very long time. Um, if you're standing and sitting all day long though, if you're shifting positions around, it might be beneficial to have a spring mount. If you're going to be raising and lowering your monitor, it's just so much easier to quickly you know, use one finger to push your monitor around. If you have a pull mount, sometimes it might require the loosening of bolts to get the, the certain angle you want especially if you're going to be raising or lowering your monitor on the pole itself. Again, I think pole mounts look absolutely great. I think they're very minimal. Oftentimes, it's just a single bar coming down from the back or even the side of your monitor. Um, spring mounts can look pretty nice too. And in fact, there are a lot of minimal options out there and they're certainly more adjustable. Now it's time to start talking price. And I think in general, if you're going for a pole mount, you can go much, much cheaper Obviously, you really don't want to skimp out on some things, but for instance, I have just a $30 Amazon pull mount I bought a few years ago at this point, and it's still going strong. There's just way less mechanical components in this thing. It's pretty sturdy, doesn't require a lot of maintenance, and you know it's doing its job. Uh, the monitors that I have had mounted on this thing generally are pretty stationary, so I'm not moving it around a lot, and it looks pretty nice. You can obviously go for a more expensive option if you want. You can go for a dual mounted configuration, you can go for a version with more accessories, better cable management, but again, because it's stationary, it's gonna last a very long time. You don't really need to go super expensive on this thing. Higher prices really start to kick in when you start talking about spring mounts. Obviously, there's some super expensive options out there. You can look at their Ergotron mounts that can range in the ballpark of three to $400, which to me is it's a bit more than I would wanna be paying for a monitor arm, but there are certainly benefits to doing so. Obviously, the load capacity is, is much, much higher. Um, the ease of use in regards to shifting your monitor around with maybe two to three fingers is much, much easier. They're made with green materials. They offer 10 to 15 year warranties. I mean, the list goes on and on with these things. And this is something you really need to decide if it's worth your money. Maybe if you have a really professional recording studio and you're trying to mount a lot of monitors, maybe this is something you would want. Obviously, they look really good and you're buying a name brand product. 
On the other end of the spectrum, we do have some cheaper Amazon spring mounts out there, and I'm sure they get the job done, particularly if your monitor will be stationary. So if you do find a cheaper spring mount that you really like, that you like the visual aspects of, that you like the cable management, feel free to buy it. But, you know, in my opinion, I think you're going to be losing some material quality. Um, I think the movement is really going to be the big sufferer here. If you're going to be moving your monitors around a lot, there may be some mechanical aspects that could fail in the future. But again, if it's stationary, there's not a lot of room for error. So if you really like the look, feel free to go for it. Personally, I usually like to go somewhere in the middle. And this can be generally said for a lot of tech setups. Typically, people don't go the most expensive. Uh, but you really don't want to go the cheapest either if you can avoid it. So the middle of the road option for me is this Monoprice dual monitor desk mount. And this thing really checks all the boxes that I was looking for. It's got the dual monitor setup, which I needed for my two monitors. It's got some adjustability in there with the gas spring. So I should be able to raise and lower and swivel this thing accordingly. It's got some nice cable management features with some channels that routes the wires down. And it's really clean. There's no branding really anywhere obvious. Um, it looks pretty minimal. It's all black, which goes with one of my themes of my workstation. So this thing is really great. And you know, it's not super cheap. It's not 30 bucks, but it's definitely not the three to $400 range of the Ergotrons either. So this is exactly what I was looking for. Now, a quick thing I'd like to note before moving on to the final setup is to keep an eye out for these Amazon lift engine mounts. These things have excellent reviews. I've come across them a lot on Reddit and it actually checks all of my boxes. Unfortunately, it's sold out all the time. Um, if you look closely, it looks pretty similar to another mount we've been talking about on this video. And it does come in at less than half the price tag of the MSRP of some more expensive options. So just keep an eye out for this thing. It's sold out pretty often. So if you can get your hands on it, it could be a nice upper tier middle of the road option for you. So finally looking at my before setup, you can really see I'm losing a lot of space in the corners. I have that monitor stand hanging off the desk. Things just don't look as clean as I really want them to. You got cables all over the place. And after installing arms, it really just cleans things up a bit. The cables are a lot tighter. Even had some built-in cable management that really helped with that. You can see I have a lot of space now on the back and in the corner. And I think this is even so minimal that I really actually need to start adding stuff back. I think you know this is a little too sparse for my liking. But you know, this is less so a review of this particular mount but more so a guide for what you can do for your own setup. Finally, this is 16 ounce setups. So I was having a shot of espresso while I was filming this. Uh, today's coffee is a stick board blend from a hatchet coffee in Boone, North Carolina. Anyways, I think that's gonna be it for this video. See you guys in the next one. Peace.